For those of you who don't know me, my name is Logan Parker, and I've been living off the grid for the last 10 years. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I get reliable and clean drinking water off the grid on my little homestead in North Carolina. Rainwater collection. I think some of you guys have seen this system that I designed. I've got a whole video out on that. Check out that video. This is my rainwater collection system. Um, and it's pretty simple. It's basically a collection tank on top and to the side of that we have the biological sand filter that filters all the water to 99.7 percent purity this is purified rainwater collected in a giant tank a 300 gallon tank that's right behind this aluminum jacket i made to keep it protected from the sun and from super freezing temperatures Above it is a collection tank stored in an IBC tote. And to the right here to the left of it is the biological sand filter, which is basically a sand filter that uses gravity and a biological film that forms on the surface, which breaks down, it eats, parasitic bacteria that would be living on your roof in bird poop that came from a bird's stomach when they pooped it out because they have parasites living in their stomach they can also live in your stomach which is why if you drink raw unfiltered rainwater you might get sick so we use a biological sand filter to filter all of the rainwater that comes off of the roof and it gravity filters down through about two feet of uh, filter sand which is 0.2 to 0.3 millimeter sand and then down through a coarse layer of gravel at the bottom where then an open pipe picks it up and spills it out into this clean water tank so it's a completely gravity fed system um, and the way that that biological film stays alive is that it stays submerged in water, which is why we bring the open side of the pipe from the bottom, the filtered water after it goes down and up at the top. And it's sealed up here so that water at the top can't go through that same pipe. It has to come, the water that spills out as an overflow has to come from that bottom. So that's all filtered water at the bottom that cleanly spills out into this or that cleanly spills out into this tank right here which is where we get our drinking water that um, that biological film forms naturally on its own um, because like any other life process it naturally finds balance um, there's always good bacteria with bad bacteria sometimes the bad bacteria um, especially if it's parasitic, can explode in population and eat, eat, eat up your gut and basically can make you sick. Um, um, but there's still beneficial bacteria in there that also exist in the bird poop and other debris on leaves that fall on your roof. And they come in and colonize the surface of that sand bed that's submerged in water with about two inches of water. And they eat up the parasitic bacteria and anything else that's living in that system that they can eat. And that's the number one filter for parasites. And then as you use the rest of the sand filter, you're filtering out all the particulates and there's some kind of chemical reaction that goes on in the depths of the sand that I don't quite understand, but apparently it pulls out even more of the like fine stuff, like viral load that's in that water that's potentially in that water and then it ends up coming out 97 99.7 percent pure i mean that's amazing and all it is is sand and that's why i created it because i don't want to build a filtration system that relies on pumps or um, equipment and maintenance and all the things 
like particulate filters. I don't want a rainwater collection system that's gonna use a UV light and use energy that I may not have if those solar panels, you know, just, or the batteries quit working over time. This is a system that once built, it can, it could stand for probably a thousand years. I shit you not. This system, it may cost you three grand to build it, but it's water for life. And what's the number two, most number three most important part below air and shelter is you need clean water to drink. And we got that taken care of with this system. So please um, feel free to learn more information. And I got a set of plans that you can purchase um, on our website at heirloombuilders.com slash designs for sale. And they're super cheap right now, so go in and grab them while they are cheap. This system works for me, and I think, you know, basically anywhere on Earth, um, it will work. You may need to modify or customize it for your location and the available materials that you have, but this thing is built with IBC totes. That's an intermediate bulk container that is available around the world. Um, it's part of our globalized infrastructure and we're going to take advantage of that so um, they're easy they're flat so they're easy to penetrate when you have to penetrate like a lead free hose bib um, that you're not necessarily going to you know you're gonna to need to make some custom fittings for this situation and that, that's what that plan is all about um, it's it's hopefully um, able to explain to you how we built this system in detail so that you can jump in and not have to have the same expensive learning curves that I might have or you might have on your own if you just try to wing it and figure it out as you go. This system I designed over pretty much the course of six years studying rainwater and living with rainwater. Um, in particular, when I was living out of that bathhouse with the little blue uh, sand filter tank and the other two IBC totes that are right next to it collecting the water. I've been experimenting with a lot of systems and this system right here that filters water with a biological sand filter and provides me 300 gallons of drinking water, which is, this thing is always full because every bit of rain comes through this filtrate, uh, comes through this sand filter and into the filter tank. Um, and then when it overflows from this system, because we get a lot more than what we need just for our personal drinking use, when it overflows, it comes out of the pipes at the top. That's the surge tank overflow. The lower pipe is the overflow from the clean water tank. Those go underground and they flow into a cistern. It's a 10,000 gallon concrete cistern that was built into the ground. And we built a shed over top of it to conceal it, to keep water from getting in it, uh, and to make use of the space that is that giant foundation of what well, we've got is a 12 by 12 shed and another 12 by 12 open cistern that you can see right here is the same thing as what's underneath the shed, except the shed has a poured concrete floor. On top of that stem wall, This has a frame and roof, post and beam frame. But this is the same thing that's on the other side. The other side's just full of water. This is empty because we don't really need more than 5,000 gallons. I mean, I'm telling you, I, me and my, uh, you know, it's a small family. I live with three other people, my wife and two kids, and 5,000 gallons is enough water if you don't flush the toilet 10 times a day, getting rid of 15, 20 gallons of water at a minimum. Um, and you're just smart with your resources, you don't need much. So this system that cost me about seven grand could potentially cost even less than that. The shed was extra, don't get me wrong. Um, but the cistern itself, with the concrete lid and the pumps and everything that pulls water from the space that I access via this steel hatch. There's probably about 4,200 gallons of water in there right now. And that's about 500 gallons down. We had rain like two weeks ago. 
you can use it pretty fast. But this has the capacity, this cistern underneath the shed has the capacity to store all of the gravity fed overflow from the rainwater collection system on the roof on the other side so that I never have to worry about pumps or anything getting in breaking. So if that, I don't ever have to worry about pumps or anything like that breaking with a gravity fed system um, where a breakage might actually result in no water. So I could go, like I said, I could go on vacation for two years, come back and I'm gonna have a full cistern of water. If my pumps are busted or my battery's busted and I can't get pressurized water into the house, then I can always dip five gallon buckets in there and get the water that I need for washing or whatever. This is a shit hits the fan prep, prepper's glory right here. This is my pride and joy. And I hope that you find some useful value out of the information in this tour. So if so, smash that like button because it helps me bring out more of this information to you and kind of inspires me um, to realize how many people are here with me. You know, this is what I'm trying to do. And I feel like everybody is trying nowadays to do a little bit of something to procure their own resources, know where their food's coming from and not be so reliant on grid energies and a globalized world. So if you resonate with that, please give me a like and make sure to subscribe to our channel too because we'd love to see you on the next one. Until then, peace out.